This Soviet space probe is the last one ever to land on the planet Venus, and after what it found there, the Soviets never returned. We will now explain what they discovered on our neighboring planet back then, and why no one has had the courage to visit Venus again since. We'll also take a look at the original footage and audio recordings from the surface of Venus. So make sure to stick around until the end. A warm welcome to you all, folks. Venus is a damn strange planet. It is very similar to Earth in many ways, yet at the same time, as different as can be. While everyone is talking about Mars these days, Venus was the absolute superstar in the early days of the space age, and for good reason. We can easily observe the surface of Mars from Earth with telescopes, so we knew early on what was going on there, which was basically sandstorms and a few rocks quietly rusting away. With Venus, it was completely different. All we can see from Earth is an impenetrable cloud cover. These clouds hide the surface, but they also reveal something very important. Venus must have a dense atmosphere, much denser than that of Mars, and much more similar to that of Earth. And since Venus is also closer to the Sun than our planet, it must be really warm down there. This sparked the imagination at the time. Sci-fi authors early on speculated that there was a dense alien rainforest beneath the clouds of Venus. Write me a comment and let me know which planet you find more exciting, Mars or Venus. What should human space travel focus on? I'm very curious to hear your thoughts. And if you're as enthusiastic about space topics as I am, then why not subscribe to the channel right now? It's free, you'll never miss a video again, and you'll be helping me out a lot. And if you've already subscribed, giving the video a thumbs up really helps. Maybe we can hit 5,000 likes to appease the YouTube algorithm. Thanks, everyone. Yes, even in 1960, the rainforest theory was, of course, already science fiction. The famous astronomer Carl Sagan had already suggested back then that the impenetrable cloud cover might actually be the result of a runaway greenhouse effect. The world beneath the clouds would therefore be nothing more than a hellish world. But there was only one way to find out. Fly there and take a look. As with so many early milestones in the space race, the Soviets were the first to try. It was 1961 and the USSR had already taken a dominant lead. They had sent the first satellite into space, put the first human into orbit, and even sent the first probe to the moon. Venus seemed like the logical next target. The Soviets built two probes, Venera 1 and Venera 2. That was standard procedure at the time because there was a fairly high chance that one of them would fail. And one really cannot praise their ambition enough. Without modern onboard computers using slide rules and primitive electronics, the Soviet engineers sent their probe on a ballistic journey to Venus. Both probes even came within 100,000 kilometers of Venus, but both suffered a complete system failure before they could reach their destination. Hardly any usable data. While the Soviets went back to the drawing board, NASA also continued. In 1962, the Americans succeeded where the Soviets had failed. NASA's Mariner 2 probe flew to within 35,000 kilometers of Venus and carried out the first successful close observation of another planet. What it found was disturbing. Temperatures of up to 237 degrees Celsius, not exactly perfect for a life-friendly alien paradise. Based on these findings, NASA decided to put research into Venus largely on hold for the time being. The focus shifted to the Moon and Mars. The Soviets were less convinced. They felt they were on the verge of a monumental discovery, but they had no idea how arduous the whole undertaking would become. In 1966, the Soviets had built larger and more robust spacecraft for Venera 3 and 4. These new probes weighed over 900 kilograms and were packed with instruments. Venera 3 suffered another system failure, but the Soviet targeting was flawless. The probe slammed into Venus like a cannonball. That was the first man-made object to ever crash onto another planet. By the way, the Soviets later managed a hat trick. They were the first to crash spacecraft on the Moon, Venus and Mars. There's probably a lesson in there somewhere. If you're going to fail, at least set a record while doing it. Venera 4 in 1967 was their greatest success up to that point. The probe reached Venus with all systems intact and dropped the capsule into the atmosphere. It was the first spacecraft ever to collect measurements in the atmosphere of another planet. The data sent back revealed something fascinating. At high altitudes, the atmosphere of Venus is very similar to that of Earth on a warm summer day, almost a pleasant environment, but the deeper the probe descended, the more extreme the climate became. After 90 minutes of slow descent, the transmission broke off. It is believed that the capsule was crushed by the weight of the atmosphere, like a beer can at a campsite. 
But just like passionate, beer-drinking, permanent campers, the Soviets were not discouraged. They simply decided to build even bigger and stronger probes. For Venera 7 and 8, the descent modules were built with thicker steel shells. When Venera 7's parachute opened on August 17, 1970, it did not last long. The material simply tore or melted. The landing module fell like a stone and reached a final speed of 61 kilometers per hour before impacting the surface of Venus. Despite the broken antenna, the lander sent back information, and what Venera 7 found confirmed the worst fears. The temperature measured at the surface was 475 degrees Celsius, about as hot as a pizza oven, and yet the Soviets were undaunted. In 1972, they returned with Venera 8. Miraculously, this probe had no technical difficulties. The descent module landed gently and recorded data for almost an hour. Now they knew. The air pressure on the surface of Venus is 92 times that of Earth's atmosphere. That's about the amount of pressure you'd experience if you were standing nearly a kilometer below the surface of the ocean. And as if that weren't enough, the lower atmosphere is filled with sulfuric acid. So hellish temperatures, deadly pressure, and to top it all off, sulfuric acid. So I'd much rather stay with my can of beer at the campsite if I had the choice. But Venera 8 had revealed one last fact that was too good to ignore. Despite the dense cloud cover, enough sunlight reaches the surface of Venus to theoretically take photographs. And if that were to succeed, it could be the first image ever taken on another planet. With this prospect in mind, the Soviets set about constructing, you guessed it, Venera 9. For Venera 9, the Soviets made a fundamental change to the design. The descent capsule now weighed nearly five tons, as much as a full-grown African elephant. The most notable features concerned a new landing procedure. At the bottom was the impact ring, connected to the main body by shock absorber legs, and on top was the new aero brake. This thing, which looks like a steampunk hat, takes advantage of the incredible density of Venus's atmosphere, which behaves more like a liquid than normal air, and then it succeeded. This is the very first photo ever taken of Venus. It was taken in 1975 on black and white film by Venera 9. What we see is a field of broken, jagged rocks surrounded by a sand-like material. It's not exactly breathtaking in itself, but it is a real image from another planet. A real image of the hellish landscape of Venus. And that alone, in my view, is what truly makes this photo breathtaking. Venera 10 followed a few days later and showed flat ground. The smooth surface of something that is probably an ancient lava flow. With these two missions, the Soviets made history. The Venera 9 orbiter was the first spacecraft to orbit Venus in a stable orbit, while the lander was the first to send back images from the surface of another planet. But that was not the end of Soviet Venus exploration. A little time jump to Venera 13, a highly successful mission from 1981. This probe delivered the first color photo of the surface of Venus. The probe landed near a cliff so you get a sense of the depth, and that makes it all a little more real and at the same time a little more alien. You can also see the base of the lander with these metal fins that were added to prevent the probe from turning over and wobbling as it fell. This probe was also equipped with a drill to analyze the surface of Venus. It found a material very similar to a rock we call tough on Earth. Essentially solidified volcanic ash, and Venera 13 carried a microphone. So we can listen to the sounds of Venus. Here is the recording. Absolutely crazy to hear real sounds from another planet, isn't it? And honestly, it's better than anything in the music charts these days. Venera 14 then found another flat plain of smooth rocks in 1981 that are very similar to basalt on Earth, a volcanic rock that makes up most of the ocean floor. After that, there were other orbiter missions, but Venera 14 was the last time a man-made object reached the surface of Venus. However, NASA is planning a return to Venus, for now from orbit and with an atmospheric probe. The Veritas and Da Vinci missions are set to re-examine the planet. From the 2030s onwards, Veritas will map the surface in high resolution, while Da Vinci will descend through the atmosphere to analyze its chemical composition. A new landing is not planned at this stage, so for now Venus remains a world that we can only explore from a safe distance. I will keep you updated on all further research findings from the Venus mission. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel now, and don't forget to give it a thumbs up so we can hit 5,000 likes. And now, let's switch from Venus to our moon.
Something absolutely incredible has just happened there. Scientists have observed a huge explosion on the surface of the moon live, and the footage is spectacular. You can find out exactly what happened up there and what it has to do with the strangest object in the solar system in the video shown above on the right. Be sure to check it out, it's very exciting. As always, there's another video about science and space at the bottom right. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care, folks.